This is Sir Lumbington, my region locked ultimate Iron Man. Originally restricted only to Lumbridge, I recently completed my quest to return to Remington and unlock every area in between, each containing their own unique benefits and challenges. Now, with limited access to high level content, Sir Lumbington will have to learn to do big things in a small area if he's going to take on the toughest challenges here, all leading up to facing the Calphite Queen. So stick around, this is the journey of Sir Lumbington. Aren't Jesus, what are you doing? You're ruining my cool new series intro. Oh, hey, sorry, Lemington. I just wanted to let you know that I had some really spicy new RNG magic that I want to try out. Is... is it good RNG? Please tell me it's good. Oh, yeah, definitely good. I think. Or horrible. Either way, there's going to be a lot of it. So stick around for the whole episode because it's going to get crazy. Um, anyway, welcome back. Last episode, we completed Lost City and unlocked Zanaris, which means that the Lumbington area is now fully unlocked. We're in phase three now, with no extra restrictions or rules. It's just you, me, and the open road from Lumbridge to Remington. And a lot of frogs. Which reminds me, this also happened. Hero of Lumbridge, acquire the talisman of the cosmos and I will show you what I know. For real? A cosmic talisman? There are clues to your fate scattered throughout the land. I hear giant frogs have a pretty good drop rate. So, we've got some things to work toward, including praying for a cosmic talisman from random events, and opening some clue scroll caskets to try to find, uh, clues to my fate or something? I've looked at my options for which monsters drop clue scrolls in my area, but more on that in a sec. I first want to outline some of my other goals for the beginning of Phase 3. Number 1. Combat Levels. Let's face it, Sir Lumbington is a weakling right now. I want to level up all my combat skills, including defense and prayer, as I do want to unlock overheads. Number two, part of leveling combat skills is leveling magic. I have a few magic milestones I want to hit. 48 to enchant a ruby amulet, which unlocks the strength amulet, my current best in slot for melee. And then 55 for high alchemy, which I'll eventually use in the ham storeroom. The last goal is to unlock some renewable gear upgrades. Let me explain what I mean by this. There are some items I have to carry around with me because getting them back is either too annoying or just not possible, like the Draymond Staff or Void when I eventually do pest control. But a lot of gear is available either through shops or as a relatively common drop, like the Bone Crossbow or the Mage Robes from Wizards, for example. Once I hit the level to use it, I can get it whenever I need it, like a sort of roundabout means of storage. So I'll be looking specifically for levels that unlock these renewable gear options. The TLDR of the goals is that I want clue scrolls and combat levels, including up to 55 magic for high alchemy, unlocking gear upgrades along the way. I've got a couple different targets in mind to do this training, so let's take a look at the first target, the level 13 giant frogs. Not only do they drop big bones, but they also drop beginner clues at a rate of 1 in 64, and there's a chance for long bones for some free construction XP along the way. I'll be ranging them to start, so let's gear up. I can fletch an oak shield for some extra defense and... oh. Yeah, so it looks like we'll be starting with defense. Here we are at the giant frogs. I marked them because... uh... I, actually, I don't know why I marked them. I guess it's hard to see green against green or something. There's 8, 9, and 10 defense. Now we can wear the oak shield. Hey, there we go, my first beginner clue. Let's take a look. Hmm, okay, cheer in Varrock with a red cape? Yeah, I can't do that. There's my first significant prayer level, 22 prayer. That unlocks the rapid heal prayer, which is actually surprisingly useful for the ham storeroom. I'll definitely use that later. Ooh, Rick Turpentine. Okay, yes, yes, this is a chance for a cosmic talisman. Let's see. 80 coins. So right now I'm a little too weak to just face tank these frogs, so I'm having to save spot. But I have an armor upgrade coming up soon that'll hopefully help with that. Hey, there we go, finally another beginner clue. Let's take a look, can we do this one? Hey, yes we can, and it's the one I just unlocked last episode. So I'm definitely going to juggle this clue. There's actually something kind of cool about juggling beginner clues in my area. I did the math, and I have about a 43% chance of being able to complete any beginner clue. If I get two doable clues, not only do I have a good chance at a two-step casket, but I also have two 43% chances to get a back-to-back -back doable step. If I do, then I have a guaranteed casket. I'm not sure what those odds are exactly, but they're pretty good to be able to complete a beginner clue if I get two doable steps. And there's some random levels in the background. Alright, I just found this other clue, and take a look. Yes, it's at the wizard's tower. Okay, we can juggle these over there and see what happens. 
All right, we found another clue. Probably a drop, but what is it? Drain our manor. Let's go. That's a back-to-back -back doable step. That means this is a guaranteed casket. So I'm really hoping for an elemental staff from this, but I would also be pretty hyped for a coif or a black axe or pickaxe. All right, can we get the two-step? Nope, but what clue is this? Another back-to-back. -back. That means we can get a casket and keep a clue. That is so sick. All right, here we go. Show me the casket. Honestly, I want to open this now, but I've never stacked caskets before, and I kind of want to wait until I have at least two caskets to open them together. For now, we'll just keep clue hunting at the frogs. All right, there is 25 defense. We can now... Uh, wait, what? Oh, okay. There we go. 25 defense. We can now wear frog leather armor, which means it's time to go to Dargishkan for the very first time. I've never even entered the city since unlocking it multiple episodes ago. I'm guessing most players haven't spent much time in this underground goblin city, so I thought I'd tell you a bit about all the dead content you can do here. First of all, it's huge. It's about as long as Varrock is wide, except it has three floors. It's also really cool looking, like check out these details. Some of the features you might be most familiar with are Barlock, who gives you construction XP for long bones and curved bones, Reldak, who sells frog leather armor, and the Dorgish Khan Agility Course, which requires level 70 agility, and if I ever get to that level, it means I'm being held hostage and to please send help. But beyond that, there's some really interesting lesser known parts of the city. If you like weird minigames, you'll love it here. One of the biggest parts of the city is the market, where you can do the market trading minigame and sell human food to the goblins for very minor value. They'll also give you some goblin delicacies such as green gloop soup, frog burgers, and loach. Just make sure to read the wiki page for a brief explanation of how it works. Did you know that if you talk to Oldak here, he'll give you a random boost to runecrafting or mage, up to plus two to either skill? He'll also make you orbs that teleport you to Dorgishkan in exchange for law runes and molten glass. Speaking of molten glass, you can make it down here at the furnace in the south of the city using this handy sand pit. But that's about all you can make, as this furnace can only make glass and jewelry. You can't smelt ore in it for some reason. Maybe you knew all that, but did you know there's a machine that makes cave goblin wire? And you can steal it with 44 thieving? Why would you want cave goblin wire? Well, for the relighting the broken lamps minigame, of course. You can use a light orb to fix a broken lamp found around the city for 1,000 fire making XP. You only need 87 crafting to attach the wire to an empty light orb. Oh, you don't have 87 crafting? Well, no worries. As long as you have 52 thieving and a lockpick, you can get a light orb from one of the thieving chests in Dorgishkan. Jokes aside, these are actually interesting. There are two different types of chest, the average chests and the rich chests. These actually have some interesting loot, including the light orbs, runes, clue scrolls, and gems that I can't get anywhere else. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a lockpick until I lamp to 17 hunter for implants, so that'll be something for the future. There's more weird stuff in the city, including a scary place, but your brain is probably already exploding with this wealth of useful information, so let's get back to why we came down here in the first place. All right, here we go. Let's pick up some frog leather armor from Reldak here. Check out all these bonuses. Not only is it a defensive upgrade, but each piece has range attack bonus as well. Yo, what? This looks sick. Why does this look so cool? Sir Lummington looking beefier than ever. You know, in a way, it feels right that I got the levels for this from killing frogs. You know, wearing the skins of my enemies or whatever. That's a reasonable thing to say, right? By the way, I really enjoyed making that little essay on the lesser known parts of Dorgishkan. If you enjoyed the more informational tone or if you learned something, consider subscribing and leave me a comment letting me know if I should do more of that. Anyway, I got what I came for and now I have renewable access to my current best in slot range gear. It's also super inexpensive. The whole set, including the crossbow, is only about 4k. I also decided to craft an iron met helm because it has no negative range bonuses. This only enhances the look for sure. But... I am not yet one with the swamp. I was walking by this house and I saw these leather gloves. This outfit is fine, but there's one thing that sticks out like a pink glove. It's the pink gloves. Now the set is complete. I am truly one with the swamp. I feel like I'm using intimidation tactics while killing these frogs. You know, I feel like this account has, in a way, become a frog. I started my frog training with jumping on the stones in the swamp cave, then I killed frogs for runes. Now I'm killing them wearing the skins of their very brethren. It's pretty safe to say that Lumbington is in his frog era. 
And there's 40 range. It's a pretty cool milestone that unlocks you bows for us, which we could actually theoretically get to with fletching. And with this last bone, we get 26 prayer. Very nice. Which I could actually use in this situation. All right, we got another beginner clue on the ground. Let's check it out. Well, Varrock, red cape. That's another one I can't do. Wait, red cape? Isn't this the same clue I couldn't do earlier? I might have to start keeping track of these. Wow, okay. The literal next kill is another beginner clue. And can we do this one? Yes, we can, and it's actually the Champion's Guild one that I just unlocked again. Really glad I unlocked that. I'm gonna go ahead and juggle these. Once again, we've got two doable steps, which means that if I get a back-to-back -back step here, this is a guaranteed casket. Oh, Lumbridge, yes, it's a guaranteed casket, let's go! And it requires leather boots, but luckily for me, there's leather boots right here. That was hashtag calculated. All right, let's do this clue step. Can we get the two-step casket? If we do, we get to keep a clue. Yes! Two-step casket! Alright, I can keep juggling my other clue again. Alright, I'm way too excited to open these to keep stacking them, so we gotta do it now. Again, a staff would be amazing, a coif, black axe, or pickaxe would all be good, and if I get really lucky, the monk robes would actually be a sick upgrade because I have access to basically no prayer bonus gear. But above all else, we're really looking for an elemental staff. That would be game-changingly good for this account. So let's see what we can get. Here we go. First casket. Oh my, oh, oh yes, oh it's, that is so good, oh my god, and what do we get from number two, I don't even, <laughs> black wizard hat, all right. So obviously that was amazing, the earth staff is so good for this account, it'll save me so much money on runes, and it saves an inventory space. It's actually especially good as it's one of the runes I need for both of my relevant teleport spells, Lumbridge and Home Tele. Of course an air staff would have been better, but I really can't complain, this is absolutely huge for this account, this will help me hit my mage goals way faster. So wait, is this supposed to be a clue to my destiny? Aaron Jesus, any ideas? I'm guessing this is your doing. Hello? Arm Jesus? I've just got to make a few adjustments to this thing. That should do it. Huh. Guess he can't hear me. So, Earth Staff? Is that the clue? Is there something in the Earth? Or is it more about the magic part? I have no idea. But what I do know is that I'm about to go cast some freaking Earth spells. Look at this magic G. This man is rocking it. So now that I have an earth staff, I want to train some magic, and that means we need a new target. Otherworldly beings. I talked about these last episode when I unlocked Zanaris. They have awesome rune drops and negative magic defense, making them a perfect place to start using my new staff. My goal is to stack up some nature, cosmic, and law runes, since using teleports just got even easier with a staff. And we'll start off with a mime show random event. I guess I have to get one of these every time I come to Zanaris now? Ah yes, the novelty food item drop, a 1 in 128 mackerel. Very... funny? There we go, that's the drop I'm looking for, 5 nature runes, that is so good. Okay, so while I was excited, it turns out this is really slow right now. After about an hour, I've only killed 32 of these guys, that's about 2 minutes per kill. It's gonna cut into my funds, but I think training on these guys with Chaos Runes might be the move. Alright, the Chaos Rune stack is looking big, and the Cash stack is looking very small and sad. But that's okay, we can always get more of that. Hey, and look at that, first kill back we get a Mithril Mace. I was actually really hoping for this drop, as it's my best in slot melee weapon right now. I'm really glad we got this, that means I can train melee next. 46 mage, 47 mage, and 40 hit points, that looks kinda nice. So we're just about done with the Chaos Runes, and they definitely make it a little bit faster, but setting up the safe spot here is actually kind of annoying. I want to try one more target that's a little more AFK, but also has some really useful drops. It's still the Frog era, so I say it's time we hit Peak Frog. We were going after the level 99 giant frogs in the Lumbridge Swamp Caves. I've already killed their inferior level 13 counterparts, but these giant frogs are way more interesting. They have an insanely high chance of dropping nature runes, making them about one nature rune per kill on average. They also have 100 hit points, and are very easy to safe spot, making them an ideal AFK target. Alright, I just dropped the rest of my money on runes, and we'll head down to the swamp caves. Squeeze through hole. My favorite spot.
Let's pause right here. What do you think will happen? Will I A. Make it across to enjoy more frog murder B. Fall on the water, but my candle lantern will protect my flame Or C. Fall on the water and realize that I have not brought a tinderbox Vote now on your phones If you voted C, congratulations, you won! And I have lost Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's not good I'm gonna hide in this cave over here while I figure out what to do Actually, I remember reading that if you talk to the cave goblins down here, they'll give you a tinderbox. So let's try that. Go, 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 go. Ow, 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 ow. Please give me a tinderbox. What the? Oh, okay. We're getting out of here. That is it. Goodbye. Well, I would call that a success. All right. Let's try that again with a tinderbox this time. Here we go. Finally, with the frog murder, let's keep going. There's 48 mage, another 1 in 128 novelty food item drop, the spinach roll. Is this what RN Jesus is doing for me? Here's the drops we're looking for, 9 nature runes, and there's 5 cosmic runes. And a big milestone coming up, 49 mage, that's enchant ruby, the strength amulet has been unlocked. That's huge, it's my best in slot amulet for melee for a very long time. We're gonna make a quick pit stop in the ham storeroom to grab a ruby amulet, but first my inventory is just looking awful. So let's get rid of some stuff. There we go, much better. Visiting my brothers in pink yet again. Except this time, we're looking like an absolute unit. Okay, I'm all out of food and almost out of health, so this chest better have a ruby amulet in it. Oh, hey, it does, nice. And there we go, we have an amulet of strength. That'll come in handy in just a sec. I have an important announcement to make. Something big. Something huge. We need more jutes. Like, a lot of jutes. No, seriously, why would I stop farming jutes? They're great passive XP, and I kinda wanna see what kind of stack I can get from these. I really wanna create a jute empire of my own. And here's probably the last level down here, the frog's 50 magic. Very nice, my first 50 on the account. Honestly, I've been surprised to see magic level up faster than range since I expect to be more of a rangy boy. I guess the utility of magic just made me want to level up more. Here's the final rune count from this grind, looking really nice. Almost 200 natures and a nice stack of cosmics. And here's actually a really useful level off farming the jutes, 26 farming. I'll definitely be growing both of these down the line for some herb lore training. Whoa there, relax, no need to be alarmed. It's still just me, Sir Lumbington. I know what you're thinking. Why do I look so rugged, handsome, and intelligent? Well, there's just one reason for that. It's time to go melee mode. Actually though, I finally want to get my melee stats up. Going back to the idea of renewable gear options, at 30 attack and defense, I get access to adamant weapons and shields. That's ideal because the sour hogs I unlocked with the poor sign of interest quest drop adamant scimitars and kite shields. So we'll be working towards base 30s in the melee stats to start. Oh, and I'm hoping this Iron Man gear will provide enough defensive bonuses that I won't have to go for food very often. Hi, so spoiler alert, this was absolutely not enough defensive bonus to go without food. Actually, apparently I didn't do my research because it turns out that the frog leather body has really good defensive bonuses, even when compared to the Iron Man body. I'll need to go grab another one of those to continue. And here we go, one frog leather body. Take a look at all those bonuses. Like, that is a crazy upgrade. And it's also a swag upgrade. Look at this. Wait, what the f <laughs> What the hell? Why does it look like that? Or what the hell? That is perhaps the worst fashionscape I have ever seen in my life. All right, well, we got the big defensive upgrade, so we will not get hit. Okay, I guess, all right, we're getting hit. All right, we are absolutely taking a beating, but here's a quick stat upgrade. We got base 20s, looking pretty good. I have solved my health issues with the little known strat known as baked potatoes. Just kidding, I'm actually recording this clip because check out what's on the ground, it's a long bone. This is a drop I've been waiting for. We could turn this in for some free construction XP in just one sec. Gotta hit a level. There we go, 30 defense. Now we can use an adamant kite shield, which I can get relatively easily from sour hogs. Plus, it's a huge upgrade to the Mithril Kite. Okay, this part turned out a little bit laggy, but check this out. Got a big construction XP drop, 4.5k. That is crazy. That's almost three entire construction levels. 25 attack, and that is over 100 jutes. 
Hey, hey, would you look at that? Two beginner clues on the ground. What do we got? Oh, Reldo. Maybe I can do that. Wait. This means I have to juggle to all three locations. This is like the worst clue to juggle. Well, let's give it a shot, I guess. Okay, it's not in the wheat field. All right, is it behind Draenor Manor? It is. Okay, can we do this clue? It's... Wait, no way. Not the red cape again. Well, we've got a step down in this clue at least. I guess I can go to the other clue step and just send it, I guess. And dig, and it's a step. Can we do it? Yeah, Lumbridge Castle. Okay, we can do it. Clue complete. Let's see what we got this time. Okay, moving on then. Wow, another clue already. These are just like flying in now. As long as it isn't the red cape step, I'll be... And with this hit, we get 30 attack. That's the Addy Scimitar unlock. That'll be a massive upgrade for my melee training in the future. And I've got a few bones to bury here for 30 prayer. Just looking for 30 strength and we'll hit the melee goal. So I was just checking up on my jutes and I killed a man as I was walking through Lumbridge and he dropped a beginner clue. Surely it won't be another red cape step. That would just be very statistically unlikely. I mean... I'm just going to set this down over here. I have got to get this thing checked out. As I bash down this tiny frog, there is 30 strength. We've officially got base 30s in all combat stats, which means it's time to finish up my mage goals. Let's see if we can get 55 mage before this episode is over. More mage means more runes, which means more money. So as always, it's time to make a withdrawal from the bank of ham. There we go. The check cleared thanks to Grum's gold exchange and we've replenished the cash stack. Basically sold everything I got here except for this emerald ring. I'm actually hanging on to it for a special reason. We'll also need an apron. All right, check it out. We can fill another stash with these items. Finally, the prophecy of storing some this items has been fulfilled. But that's not the only reason I'm on this bridge. My next target is in this building here. In fact, this is the only place that I can find this particular monster in my area, and there's only one of them. Yep, I'll be killing the lesser demon in the wizard's tower. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that this demon is nicknamed Timmy? That makes me feel a lot better about killing him, knowing that I'm murdering Timmy over and over. Timmy's got some decent drops, including the Rune Men Helm. One of the items I'm looking for here is actually the Mithril Square Shield though, as it's my best in slot shield for range right now, since square shields don't have any negative range attack bonus. Shout out to my buddy Zayo here, this absolute Chad hardcore Iron Man I met at the Lesser Demon who I had a good time chatting with. I love meeting people in game, so feel free to add me and reach out or come find me in my area. I've had a lot of fun interacting with the community lately, and it always feels good to have some social interaction. Oh shit, there's a rune med helm already. That's like, what, nine kills deep? That's sick. And there's 52 magic. Yo, what? I guess we get two rune med helms. All right, what is going on? Three rune med helms? We're only at 30 kills. I'll take them, but this is just getting ridiculous. There's 53 magic. That unlocks earth blast. That's actually huge since we have an earth staff. What the actual hell? Four rune med helms? Make it stop! Make it stop! Something weird is going on. I feel like this has got to be RNG Jesus. Hey, Lumbington. Uh, just dropping by to say hi. And uh, everything is totally normal. So, carry on. Right. Thanks? Anyway, I have a plan for what to do with these. A little known fact is that the Dorkishcon General Store buys things for the same price as the Legends Guild General Store, which is about 37.5% more than normal general stores. In fact, this is apparently so unknown that it's not even listed in the area on the wiki page about shops that buy at a higher rate. These sell for over 10k a pop here, which is amazing. Alright, I sold 3 and I kept 1, but we are back to over 30k. Back at the Lesser Demon, I mean Timmy, and that's the other drop I was looking for. Now, the astute amongst you might be wondering why I'm not going for the Mithril Chain Body Drop. Well, much like myself, you underestimate the defensive power of the Frog Leather Body. Specifically the range bonus of Frog Leather, which is actually higher than a Mithril Chain Body. Range defense is gonna matter soon, so just keep this in the back of your mind. With all the drops I wanted from the Lesser Demon, I headed back over to the Otherworldly Beings to finish up the magic grind. Here's 54 magic, one more to go. And this should do it. I think that's gonna work. Holy 
shit. Holy fucking shit. Oh my god. What? Oh, I just did it. Oh my god. You're probably wondering how I got here. Just kidding, just kidding. Let me explain this clip though. I wasn't recording, but I did a pillory guard random event. The one where you get put in jail. Well, it turns out this random event has a chance to drop the cosmic talisman. What's the chance, you ask? Rare. Yep, just rare. It's not even a number. The fact that this is so ambiguous on the wiki had me doubting that it was even possible to get this item from the pillory guard random, but it happened. It really happened. I wasn't sure if I would ever get a cosmic talisman ever, period. It's still hard to believe, but that just changed the trajectory of this account permanently. I don't have to worry about cosmic runes ever again, I can make as much teleport jewelry as I want, and I don't have to hang on to my other amulets when I'm not training those skills. I can even make a tiara with it and wear it so it doesn't take up an inventory slot. But, most important of all, I can show it to the cosmic altar and finally get the answers to my destiny. Right after I get level 55 magic. There it is, 55 mage, finally, we can cast high alchemy. This is a really, really good day for this account, I'm feeling great. Now. Let's show this cosmic talisman to the altar and learn the truth. Learn the truth. Cosmic altar! Cosmic altar! I did it! I found a co co cosmic talisman! I'm finally ready to learn the secrets about my fate! Good, good. You're finally ready to know the truth. Truth about your destiny. 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 Truth about your destiny.